Hallelujah. Get this contraption on. <laughs> Glory. This is the day the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it because we have a choice. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. God's presence is wonderful. All the time. Amen. Glory, glory. What a time to be alive, but yet dead. <laughs> Matthew 25. It's a great time to be alive, but yet dead to self. Matthew 25. In the crushing, there's not only new wine, amen, but there's fresh oil. Welcome to the house of death. <laughs> Matthew 25. Now, we have been talking about some wine and oil and about what's happening in a transition and how we need to stay filled with the oil because that maintains the fire. And the Holy Spirit brought me in in another arena so we may get another look at what's happening because we are entering a time of the early and latter rain. And many people just think that it's just sometimes rain. But I want you to know that the early and latter rain is the oil and the wine. That's what it's about. And you're going to see that the oil and the wine is essential to maintain right now and to overcome. In Matthew 25, and we've spoke about this before in verse 1, let's speak it together. The kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out and met the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. And again, we are coming into a time where you're going to see many individuals that are still foolish. Why? The word says forsake not to assemble. Why? Because that's where the oil is. See, they miss it. They may get a little wine, but they ain't getting the oil. And that's the difference. So they may have joy, but they have troubles. They struggle. They won't admit it because they're too prideful. But this is where the oil is released. So there's a fresh oil and a new wine that you and I must maintain all the time because things are going to get really crazy. When they start removing the wicked, the wicked is going to scream like crazy. They are lying like crazy right now to hold their position. They come right out with lies. The news companies, the, new, the media, the fake news, they lie right to your face. They put out things to deceive people. And so many people, because of the lack of the oil, are sucking it right up and drifting from the truth. Because you know why? What does oil do? It burns the what? Fire. The fire. <clears throat> oh, hallelujah. How many here want to be a wise virgin? Amen. I'm not going to ask you if you want to be a foolish virgin because you wouldn't raise your hand. Well, you'd have to be an idiot if you wanted to be one, right? Hallelujah. Again, verse 3, those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. That ought to tell us enough right there. I mean, you don't need any more. You can go home now. <laughs> Let's go a little further. You know, some people can't. I'm, I, I'll tell you what. It's amazing because when people lack it, I'm going to share with you something very wild. Familiar spirits and divination spirits love 
to feed on Christians. They love to feed on Christians. And they prevent a Christian from entering in. Because they'll convince them that they fulfilled their duty by just praise, but they can't make it to worship. They may make some of it, but then they drift away. They start reading their Bible. Many times they leave before the worship. They can't even press in all the way because they're bound by familiar spirits. And they think they're okay because they're looking for the feeling. Once the feeling comes to them, oh, I'm good. Oh, I know it all. Well, you can shout, jump, and, jump and do flips and still miss God. Because there's got to be an area where you have to press in. That means you got to deny yourself. If you're still promoting yourself, you ain't going to get in. Believe me, I've been at services where people were actually thrown right out of the service because they were promoting themselves. And it was an anointing service. And the power of God was moving and people were getting healed and delivered and people were doing stupid stuff and they would throw them right out because it was nothing but flesh. See, what, what's happening right now is the Holy Spirit is trying to get us to really live out of the spirit and not out of the soul or out of the flesh because too many people are living out of the soul and they think they're okay but they're really not. Is everybody okay? It says in verse 5, Now, while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Again, you can't use somebody else's oil. You must purchase it yourself, and that's worship. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should be not enough for me, us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for what? Yourself. Remember, praise brings wine. Worship brings oil. One brings the presence, one brings the glory. And verse 10, And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him into the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. <laughs> but he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Again, there's a wise and foolish. The oil of the anointing that burns the fire. Remember, Jesus baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. There's much, there's end time foolish and end time wise. Without the oil, you become anxious. You're an anxious individual. Why? Because oil supplies to the fire. Fire keeps you dead. Is everybody okay? Why? Because it burns the ashes, doesn't it? And then the enemy can't touch you. So when people are getting touched, it's because they lack the oil. Not enough fire. 1 John chapter 2. The oil and the wine. We want fresh oil and new wine all the time. But again, if you're not going to press, press. Everybody get that press in? Amen? How does oil come? Pressed. How does wine come? Pressed. If you're not a presser, you miss it then you're living out of the soul. You're emotional still. You think you've done your duty and you've missed God. 
1 John chapter 2, verse 18. He is the Lord of the resurrection. Amen? Resurrection power. So he loves dead children. <laughs> Why? Because he's always raising you. You're dependent on him in everything. Is everybody there? Verse 18, let's speak it. Little children... It is the what? Last hour. And you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. It says they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have a, an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. But you have fresh oil. You have fresh living oil. Does everybody get it? You have fresh living oil, and you know all things. <laughs> of the eternal power, presence, and truth of God Almighty. You have that oil, the anointing. And you know, see, and discern. You know. When you know, that means you're able to understand you're able to see and you're able to discern all things of time of purpose and of agenda my goodness if we can understand the importance look at Jesus remember Jesus didn't do nothing until when the anointing came now he was fully connected. Fully connected. Amen. Now he was able to go in the process of not only denying himself all the way to the cross to make the exchange. But he had to be anointed first, so he had to get the wine. He had to get the oil. The oil, that's why he was ministered to by the angels. What do you think they were bringing him? They didn't bring him a book to read. Amen? They brought him a book to write. <laughs> People would write about him. But they brought him the fresh presence, the oil of God Almighty from the throne room. Every time the angel showed up, the fresh oil, the presence of God would penetrate right into Jesus. And he was able. That's why he, he hung out by himself. He waited. He would wait all night. He'd pray all night. Why? Because he needed to have that all the time to maintain here. He was separated himself. See, sanctification is the key. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. In these last days, we are finding that there's drifters that drift and, or, or lost the fire of God and become lukewarm. They're all word and no power to overcome deception. Oh, they can quote the word. I know a lot of people. I run into them all the time. Man, they quote scriptures, but they got no power over temptation. No power over anxiety. No power over stress. No power over fear. No power. And there's a difference. In 1 Samuel chapter 10. Why? Because they're still emotionally led. Not spiritually led. Because they're still living out of the soul and not the spirit. 1 Samuel chapter 10. Hallelujah. Oil in the wine. I mean, don't get me wrong. You can worship at home and everything else, but there isn't anything greater than more than 10. <laughs> you got to have more people. Why? Because they're all carrying the presence of God. And if everybody's seeking at one time, I, I didn't share this with you, but 
uh, our last gathering when everybody was worshiping. I mean, well, well, what's today? It was Sunday, right? Yeah. Today's Tuesday. Okay. You know, your reflection you see of heat going off of a water or whatever, you know, you can see. That's what I saw in here. It was going up to the Lord. It was a, uh, an, uh, an incense of worship. It was a fragrance of worship that was going up to the Lord. And I could sense that, you know, he came in and he was just, he was so joyful. He was so grateful to be in his presence. I mean, why? Because everything is about creating an atmosphere of God right now. I mean, it's happening globally. It's about creating an atmosphere of God. That's why God is exposing all the wickedness. The world is going to be created for an atmosphere of God Almighty. That's what's happening. We're in it. That's why there's this time of early and latter rain, which is the oil and the wine. But we've got to be more disciplined. We've got to be more consistent. We can't allow the world and circumstances of our life mislead us. We can't allow family's decisions to mislead us. See, the enemy knows how to get emotionally where things get out of order. We're to be living in a divine order. Not a staggered. Not an emotional. It is a divine order. And that can only come with by maintaining divine nature. So that means you and I must be filled with the oil all the time. Be refreshed. It must be a fresh oil and a new wine. A fresh oil and a new wine. Say a fresh oil and a new wine. Or else you become dry. But you got to do something. You got to what? Press. 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 You got to press in no matter what. It's 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 1. Then Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on Saul's head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord has anointed you commander over his what? Inheritance. So, he gave him oil. In other words, he was calling him to be anointed to what? Be a steward. Over what? God's goods. His people. God's treasures. See, without the anointing, without the oil, and that fire and the anointing, God can't trust us. He doesn't trust individuals that are not consistent. He doesn't trust individuals that are not filled because he knows they're easily swayed. Listen, you may have a dream and vision and a purpose and a destiny. But it'll take you a heck of a long time to get there. Until you're dead. And that's going to take pressing in. Pressing in for fresh oil and new wine. Is everybody okay? Verse 2. When you have departed from me today, you will find two men of Rachel at, by Rachel's tomb and a territory of Benjamin and Zelza. And they will say to you, the donkeys which you hit went to go look for have been found. And now your father has ceased caring about the donkeys and is worrying about you, saying, what shall I do about my son? Then you shall go on forward from there and come to the Terebinth tree at Tabar. There three men go up, are going up to God at Bithel will meet you. One carrying three young goats, another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a skin of wine. And they will greet you and give you two loaves of bread, which you shall receive from their hands. After that, you shall come to the hill of God where the Philistine garrison is. And it will happen when you have come there to the city that you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with string instruments, a tambourine, a flute, and a harp before them, and they will be prophesying. Now, you got to remember that Saul was the first king because they rejected God from being their king. 
they wanted a man. And the Lord warned them, he'll tax you. He'll do all kinds of things. He'll take your land. He'll do whatever. He'll send you to war. He'll. But they rejected God Almighty from being their king. So God sent them a man. And it says in verse 6, And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you, and you will prophesy with them and be what? Turned into another man. Why? Because God was putting them in charge of his possessions, his inheritance. Remember, you and I are in his inheritance. In verse 7, And let it be when these signs come to you that you do as the occasion demands. For God is with you. You shall go down before me. Uh, before me to Gilgal, and surely I will come down to you to offer burnt offerings and make sacrifices of peace offering. Seven days you shall wait till I come to you and show you what you should do. Seven days. He said, why? Because seven is complete and perfect. So it was when he had turned his back to go from Samuel that God gave him a what? Another heart. And all these signs came to pass that day. Amen. So we see the anointing, he was anointed, what, worship, sacrifice of praise, prophesied by the Holy Spirit's anointing of Christ. He became a new man to oversee the inheritance of the Lord, his people, and his possessions. See, this is where God wants you and I to be so he can trust us. But if we're unstable, inconsistent, not assembling, he can. Why? Because he knows you will not stay fresh with fresh oil and new wine. He knows it. You can read your Bible all day long. You can stay home and pray all day long. But he requires us to assemble. I mean, it's a requirement. And I don't understand why people still don't get it. It should be a priority of your life, my life. And it's not because I'm the preacher. It's because I love God's presence more than I do life itself. And I know I can't exist without his presence. And I know I can't exist without the fresh oil and the new wine. But it takes pressing. Isaiah 10. We're all preachers when we get fresh oil and new wine. It's not about just one man. But in every orchestra, you got to have a leader. Or what they call a conductor. Right? <laughs> Conductors. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck, and the yoke will be destroyed because of the what? The anointing oil. The anointing oil breaks all yokes of bondage to cut loose from the world and move on into the spirit. Again, the anointing oil breaks all yokes. Breaks it. So we need to have that fresh oil. <laughs> all the time. When we gather together, it's not a social time. The only social time is between you and God. Zechariah 4. Oh, happy days. Zechariah chapter 4. Starting at verse 1, let's speak it together. Zechariah chapter 4. It says, now the angel who talked with me came back and wakened me as a man who was waking out of his sleep. 
And he said to me, what do you what? See. I can tell you, let me, I, I get this all the time. What do you see, God? What do you see? What do you see? Listen, before you even ask a question, he's asking you, what do you see? Everything is about what do you see? Not about what you see out of the soul or out of the flesh, but what you see out of the spirit. See, because carnal eyes see the man, see the physical. Spiritual eyes see the agenda and purposes. There's a difference. What do you see? What's he asking us for? So we can discern and see what's what. Amen? Zechariah 4, verse 2. And he said to me, what do you see? And I said, I am looking, and there is a lampstand of solid gold with a bowl on top of it, and on the stand seven lamps with seven pipes to the seven lamps. Two olive trees are by it, and one at the right of the bowl and another at the left. So I answered, and I spoke to the angel who talked with me, saying, what are these, my Lord? Then the angel who talked with me answered and said to me, Do you not know what these are? And I said, No, my Lord. So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, Jer you shall become a plain. And he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of the temple. His hand shall also finish it. Then you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For who has despised the day of what? Small beginnings. For these seven rejoice to see the plumb line in the land of Zerubbabel. They are the eyes of the Lord, which scan to and fro throughout the whole earth. Then I answered and I said to him, what are these two olive trees at the right of the lampstand and its left? And I further answered and said to him, what are these two olive branches that drip into the receptacles of the two gold pipes from which the golden oil drains? Then he answered me and he said, do you not know what these are? And I said, no, my Lord. And he said, these are the two anointed ones who stand beside the Lord of the whole earth. Wow. So we see here the oil was bringing sight and vision. It comes by worship and bringing the character of Christ as a consuming fire. In this, we see, we know that the two anointed ones is Moses and Elijah. Those are the two anointed ones. But there's another aspect of this because you and I are the anointed ones. Amen. So you got the Jews and the Gentiles that are also the anointed ones that have been grafted in. In Psalm 104. Psalm 104, verse 14. The oil and the wine. Fresh oil and new wine. In verse 14 it says, He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and vegetation for the service of man that he may bring forth food from the earth. And wine that makes glad the heart of man, and oil that makes his face shine, and bread which strengthens a man's heart. Wine for the inner, <laughs> oil for the outer. Does everybody get it? Wine for the inner, oil for the outer. Why? Because the oil is the anointing. Not that we don't partake of it, but it expresses the character of Christ. God is a consuming fire. 
in John chapter 2. John chapter 2. In the pressing, there is new wine. And what does he say? And a new flame, right? Oh, glory. What did I say? John 2, in verse 1. This is the gospel of John, verse 2. On the third day, there was a wedding of Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and disciples were invited to the wedding, and when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to him, woman, not mother or mommy. He said woman. Why? Because Jesus was no longer her son. Jesus was her Lord. Does everybody get it? And she recognized this. He said to her, woman, what does, you, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. And his mother said to the servants, <laughs> whatever he says, you do it. Because she realized that was no longer her son, that was her Lord. Now there was, <clears throat> there was set there six water pots of stone. Or what you might say, clay. According to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water. And they were filled them with water to the brim. And then he said to them, draw out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew the master of the feast called the bridegroom. And he said to him, every man at the beginning sets out the good wine. And when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. <laughs> this was the beginning of signs Jesus and Cain of Galilee and the manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. Now, six pots, six representing man. It was filled with water. This is where he's going to, where he says, man must be born of water and the spirit. Does everybody understand? So six equals man. He was turning men from water to wine. Uh, I go to John chapter 3 in the next chapter. In verse 1, he said, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these things or these signs that you do unless God is with him. And, of course, he came to him by night because he didn't want to get thrown out of the club, right? The Sanhedrin club. He would no longer be able to use the jacuzzis and all the other tennis courts and Golf course, whatever that is. So he came to him at night. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, there's two meanings to this. Not only see it, but enter it. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? I'd say there was a little carnal understanding. And Jesus answers, and most surely I say to you, unless one is born of the what? Water and of the Spirit. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. What was Jesus doing with man? Turning them into wine. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So everyone who is born of 
the Spirit. Praise God. The water and Spirit. Jesus turning water into wine. You and I must maintain that transition all the time. New wine, fresh oil. New wine, fresh oil. Psalm 16. <clears throat> Oh, happy days. Psalm 16. Again, we are still under the two whirlwinds. There's three whirlwinds. We are still under the two. The first one count comes and has been here. And it's ripping away and tearing and exposing all wickedness and evilness. It's moving things away. It's exposing the foolish. And also exposing the wise. It's exposing the left and the right. Everything is being exposing the tares and the wheat. Everything is being exposed right now. It's tearing away. The second whirlwind is bringing the early and latter rain. Provision, strategy, and weaponry to his people. So there's a, and the third world wound that will come will take the body of Christ off the earth. So right now you will see an escalation. The continuization of the first world wound will continue. And that first world wound is preparation and exposure of wickedness to change the atmosphere of the earth. But provision needed to be brought for us so that we could battle. There's more prayer going up now than there ever has been. There's more warfare and spiritual warfare than there ever has been. Because it is the provision that God is providing. It's not about what we can do for the kingdom. It's about how we can attack the enemy for the kingdom. Amen? See, so many people want to live by works but not willing to fight. Soldiers in the spirit are fighters in the spirit. They know how to bind, blind, mute, deaf, call destructive fire down. They know how to target strategies, locations. They know how to intercede. That's what God is calling right now. We've got a war going on. And it's going to escalate. And if we don't fight, we would lose. <laughs> Things will be taken out. More children will be abducted. They, more uh, evil po politicians would take positions and seats. More judges. Right now, <laughs> praise God, God is putting in judges. He's removing the left ones and putting in the right ones. Hallelujah. Psalm 16, verse 7. Let's speak it. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. Let me share something with you. You can't do that without fresh oil and new wine. You just can't do it. You can say you want to do it. You can hope you want to do it. You can't do it. You just can't do it. You always put yourself first. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall what? Not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. Why? Because he's no longer living out of the soul or out of the flesh, but out of the spirit. For you will not leave my soul in shield. He's, he knows the promises. Nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the what? Path of life. In your presence is what? Fullness of joy. And at your right hand are what? Pleasures forevermore. Fullness of joy. Presence is fullness. Nehemiah chapter 8. Yes, 
Nehemiah 8. Right after Ezra. And before Job. The, oh no, Esther. The employment section. Nehemiah 8, in verse 10. So we see in his presence is what? Fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. In verse 10 it says, Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your what? Is your strength. Now, where do you get his joy from? His presence. And where do you get his presence from? Praise. Amen. Praise. The joy of the Lord is the strength, presence, power, praise, glory in the character of Christ. Remember, praise brings oil, worship brings, I mean, praise brings new wine, worship brings oil. Acts 2. You know, yeah. Um, you know yourself when you're lacking. You know. And you know when others are lacking. I'm not saying you're going out and search their level, you know. I mean, we may be fruit inspectors, you know. A lot of granolas out there, nutty and fruity, but still. But I just, you know, understand that a fami these familiar spirits, these demonic forces are waiting for any entrance. Any entrance they can get. In verse 1, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues of what? Fire. And one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So when people ask me, uh, or, or somebody tell, telling me, yeah, I've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Well, you didn't speak in tongues. No, no, then you ain't been baptized in the Holy Ghost yet. You might have been touched by the Spirit, but you ain't baptized in the Spirit. Because the baptism of the Spirit is evidence of tongues. Because that's oil. That's a fresh oil that comes in. See, when you pray in tongues, you're doing an exchange also. And it says, and they were all filled, all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven, and when the sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in their own language. Now, this is the uh, multiple languages that the Holy Spirit can speak through an individual. You may go to Russia and the Holy Spirit may tell you, start praying in the Holy Ghost and your tongues will change. This is called diverse tongues. Diverse tongues is used for ministry. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we are born? Perithians, Medias, Amalites, and those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judean, Cap Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, and, and every other place. In verse 11. And Cretans and Arabs, 
We hear them speaking, and everybody gets it, right? I could have said Russian, German, Chinese, Italian, you know, but this was Middle East. Anyways, there was a lot of them going on there. And we hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. Now, was there an interpreter there? No. I can't stand all of this religious garbage. You can't do that. There's no interpreter there. Let me ask you a question, you who are concerned about an interpreter. Do you pray in tongues? No. Then what right do you have to question it? I remember somebody telling me one day, well, I can interpret tongues. I said, do you pray in tongues? He said, yes. I said, no, you can't. You're living out of the soul. And they were all amazed, perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? Others mocking, saying they're all full of what? New wine. Where they were. They were slammed. Everybody was smashed, man, in the Holy Ghost. They were slipping and sliding because of the new oil. And they were staggering because they were filled with new wine. Come on, think about this. All of a sudden, they're all looking at each other, and they're all, everybody's praying in tongues, and everybody else is hearing their language, and they're looking at each other going, what the heck did I say? You know, think about the prophets of old. Many of them prophesied and had no idea what they were saying. They, had no, they could not understand it because it was in the future. Verse 14, but Peter standing up with the eleven raised his voice and said to the men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words, for these are not drunk as you suppose. Since it is only the third hour of the day, in other words, hello. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your men, young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And my, on my men servants and maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood. How many know we've had many blood moons? Before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be what? So shall be saved. So we see fire, oil, and wine brought forth and fulfilled that day. Amen? And it's still going on. Mark 9. No, Matthew 9. Thank you. So many people are missing it, man. Sweet people are missing it. I run into many Christians who love the Lord, but they have a hard time following Him. And they, they can't see the agendas because they're not filled with the wine or with the oil. They're still carnal. In Matthew 9, is everybody there? In verse 14. Then the disciples of John came to Jesus saying, why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not? Now, these were the disciples of John the Baptist that came to Jesus. Want to know why the disciples of Jesus weren't fasting? And Jesus said to him, can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and they, then they will fast. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch pulls away from the garment, and the tear is made worse. Nor do they put new wine into an old wineskin, 
or else the wineskins break and the wine spills, and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into a new wineskin, and both are preserved. This was such an example because what he was saying, he says, you can't live in the future and in the past. You can't receive new wine by still living in the past. You just can't. You can't get that fresh oil. You can't get the new wine. You can't get it. And the area of the fast was sanctification to be separated. It wasn't just fasting food. It's fasting the world. It's fasting the, the lust and the pleasures of it. Does everybody understand? 2 Corinthians 6. Verse 14, we've heard this multiple times. But we want to maintain fresh oil and new wine. In verse 14, it says, Do not be unevenly yoked together with unbelievers. And what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? Listen, one thing you never want to do is get yoked up in business with an unbeliever. Now, they may be going to church, and they may be going good people. But if they're not filled, possessed with the Spirit, they will not see what you see. It will be different. It's unevenly yoked. Because you know what? Eventually... They will turn. They'll turn on you. It's just a matter of time. Unless they get baptized with the Holy Ghost. Because they're too easily swayed by the enemy. Verse 16. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and don't touch what's unclean, and I'll receive you, and I'll be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Again, come out from among them. Psalm 92. Now, I would never reject a donation to the ministry that with us from a heathen. You know, God willing, maybe because what they sowed, they might reap something. Like repentance. Psalm 92. <laughs> yes. Is everybody there? Verse 8. Psalm 92, verse 8. Praise God. Speak it together. But you, Lord, are on high forevermore. For behold, your enemies, O Lord, for behold, your enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. I have been what? Anointed with what? For, see, I mean, I'll look, look at this. My horn you have exalted like a wild ox. Woohoo! In other words, no lukewarm, no coldness, on fire. Why? Because he's been anointed with fresh oil. My eye also has seen my desire on my what? Enemies. And my ears, look at this. Now he's talking about the fresh oil brought him sight and what? Hearing. My ears hear my desire on the wicked who rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. They shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord, forsake not to assemble, shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. 
to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Everyone wants to be flourishing and fresh, you know. Maintaining a youth. We all want to do that. I'm not growing older than 33. I keep skipping my birthday, but my wife keeps bringing it back. No. <laughs> Deuteronomy 11. Hallelujah. Oh, happy days. I usually tell people I'm too young for this or whatever it is I'm doing. <laughs> I'm too young for this stuff. I still don't know what I'm going to be when I grow up. <laughs> My wife will testify of that too. <laughs> Deuteronomy 11, verse 13. And it shall be that if you what? Is everybody there? Come on, we're going to speak this together. If you what? Earnestly obey my commandments which I command you today to love the Lord your God and serve him with all of your heart and with all of your soul. Then I will give you the what? Rain for your land in its season. The early rain and the latter rain that you may gather in your grain your new what? Your new wine and your what? Oil. If you earnestly obey. Yes. And I'm going to close at 1 Thessalonians 4. This is the early and latter rain. It's oil and wine. Man, we are in a time right now where I'm telling you, a lot of people are going to get wiped out. A lot of people will get rescued. There'll be a great harvest. Many people will fall because of deceiving and seducing spirits of deception, doctrines of demons, because they cannot see the agendas. And they've been taken out of position already. Moving out of God's time. Rejecting the counsel of the Lord. course again that's forsaking assembling and not staying getting fresh oil and new wine it is essential again for me I don't get it I, I don't understand how come people God's children don't love his presence more than anything else hallelujah first that's four is everybody there? In verse 1. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to what? Please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your what? Your sanctification. Your sanctification. That you should abstain from from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. In other words, you should know how to keep yourself away. You should know what's clean, unclean. But again, without the oil, fresh, uh, fresh oil and new wine, you won't be able to discern. You won't be able to see. Familiar spirits will lead you more than the Holy Spirit will even though the Holy Spirit is trying to get there and break it. Because individuals are still being led and making decisions by emotion and not by truth. He said, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God. 
that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarn you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but to what? Holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Wow. It's amazing now how many people want to battle with you, not knowing that they're battling against the Lord because they can't see that. They just don't understand that because they cannot see the agenda. They can't see things through. Amen? Amen? This is a God plan, what's going on right now. I mean, I just love what's happening. And I just pray that all these wicked individuals get arrested and get saved in jail. You know, I mean, man, get them out of the way. Let's change the atmosphere for God's presence. Let's have a hallelujah. Amen. Let's watch souls get saved, people get healed, delivered, freed, out of bondage. And then they can go into the jail and visit those who've been arrested. It's all a part of God's plan. Praise God. Amen. Fresh oil, new wine. It's for me and you. Father, we thank you. We are honored and blessed. Lift your hands to heaven. And Lord, even right now, cap it off. Fill us to overflowing. You said you set a table before our presence of the enemies. And our cup runs over. So we welcome. Fill us in overflow. To come. And possess us, saturate us, anoint us, and take us. That we may fully be positioned and fully clothed with the anointing of Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.